Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306, and sorry if you hear fan noise in the in the background, it's kind of hot here. Anyway, uh, I have a mod for you guys today. Um, I have an old iPod video here. I've used this for years and years. Uh, the 30 gig drive is still okay in it, it still works perfectly, never had a problem with it, but 30 gigs is kind of limiting, so I found for really a lot cheaper than I thought it would be um, on eBay, I think it was like 15 bucks, a 60 gig drive. Uh, the important thing is I have a 30 gig model, uh, the thin back shell, which means uh, it has to be a single platter that's five millimeters thick. Um, it can't be the double platter eight millimeter drives. So unfortunately you're not gonna get a double platter in this guy. Uh, they do sell, I think up to 120 or 160 gigabyte single platters, but those guys are way more expensive. 60, 60 gigs for like 15 bucks shipped uh, with free shipping. Not bad at all, so let's uh, open the drive here. And there's a warning on here I can see already. And it says uh, you have to be careful with the tab on the, the ZIF connector. If you break that, warranty, uh, you know, warranty, the warranty is void. She's I cannot speak to you. Anyway, uh, so yeah, just got to be careful with that. I'll show you guys how to open this guy, and uh, we'll replace it restore it and get all that going. So I have mine in a protective case. Uh, barely any scratches on this guy, just some fingerprint smudges. Uh, but yeah, I kept really good uh, care of this. So to open this, you can use something like a metal spudger or a knife or something like that. But I have these uh, cheap uh, pry tools that came with like everything that I've ever bought, every repair item that I've ever bought for iPods on eBay. So I have like a million of these. So I'm just gonna use this guy because it's non-marring. So the way I suggest is usually the gap on the bottom is looser because there's no clips near the dock connector. I can get my fingernail in there, in fact. Uh, I've opened this before, so it's probably easier to open now. But yeah, you just want to get in there. I pop the first clip on the bottom corner here. And then just work your way around very carefully. And eventually you'll be creating a gap. Take some time, so take your time. Don't want to break anything. It does take a little bit of force, but uh, just be patient. Because there are clips all around the side here, and our goal is to kind of lever shell enough to actually, oh, and there goes my tool. So yeah, I'm gonna grab another one. Yeah, these tools, they work, but uh, only for a little while. <laughs> there goes my air conditioner as well, so hopefully you guys don't mind all the noise. Anywho, um, yeah, as I said, they work, but they're plastic, so what do you expect? They will eventually fail. Come on. The annoying thing is um, sometimes you'll get a clip and then it'll pop right back in immediately. Like this one. It helps if you put your fingernail or if you have guitar clips. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I got it. So to protect it, I'm going to use the front of the case so when I lay it face down, it's not going to scratch. So don't pull off the uh, back case immediately. There's a uh, ribbon connector that connects the battery here. It would help if I were focused. There we go. So you're going to need to pry that up. Um, be very careful with anything that uses that's metal because the contacts are exposed on the other side. If you short the battery, you're going to get some sparks. So you can lift that up carefully and then kind of wiggle this battery to the side. Now there's a second cable here. This cable's for the headphone jack, the hold switch, all that assembly there. You can notice how small this battery is. It's actually tiny. I would have thought it would be bigger, but you know, is what it is. Anywho, so now what we can do is swing out the hard drive, which is this uh, silver and blue part here. So what we're going to do is swing it out, and there's a ZIF connector right in here. Uh, we can get our pry tool and do that. You just want to very carefully lift that bar up. Hopefully I can get this in shot. Very carefully. 
Because if you break this, your iPod's gone. There we go. And then carefully, you kind of slide the connector out. Be very careful of um, this actual uh, ribbon cable here. It's pretty damn fragile. So you don't want to break that. I've done that before and had to buy a new one. So you want to leave it just like that. So now what we're going to do is harvest, there's going to be some sticky tape. I've already removed it on mine, but uh, harvest the rubber guards and this foam material because why the heck not. <laughs> there's some double-sided tape. You might have to pry it, but it will come off. And this is the guy. This is the original 30 gig drive. There we go. And uh, there's a ZIF connector on here as well. So we want to get in there, lift that up, and then very carefully wiggle the uh, actual ribbon connector off. And then you can close this, recycle it, whatever you want to do with this. Um, I'll be keeping this just because, you know, having a spare 30 gig drive never hurts. Anywho. Now we'll get the new drive, very carefully open it, and they've heat sealed it. I get my pocket knife, just open that real quick. So open that real quick. <laughs> Nothing's ever real quick. Okay, got it open. And the brand new drive here. Very similar to the old drive. Sorry, can't get them both in shot uh, with the zoom level that I have. Um, in fact, the exact same thickness, which is exactly what I wanted. So this just has double capacity. So I'm guessing the 30 gig drive has a single platter and then only one read write head. Uh, the 60 gig probably has a single platter once again, but two read-write heads on either side of the disc, so double the capacity, even though the same number of discs. But yeah, interestingly enough, there's like some debugging probe uh, pads or something on the 30 gig drive, but none, none on the 60 gig drive. Interesting. Anyway, they both are 3.3 volts, 500 milliamp uh, uh, current consumption. Uh, my old drive was the MK3 uh, 3008 GAL. GAL refers to, L refers to single platter. GAH is a double platter. So if you have a thinner iPod, you need the uh, a hard drive that ends in GAL. And you'll notice here I got the 6036 GAL. So that is going to be compatible. So now what we're gonna do is essentially everything in reverse. <laughs> so uh, let's see, how was it? Goes in like this. Goes in like this. Okay, yeah. So we want to get the connector in the right way around because it probably won't be good if we have it backwards. So you want to insert it very carefully. Lock the tab. These tabs are really finicky. Makes me nervous. Anywho, uh, so we can get in here and kind of jimmy the uh, connector back into place on the iPod. So the way that you can tell if these connectors are seated, uh, there's actually a double white line on the actual uh, the ribbon connector material. And when you insert it fully, you can just barely see uh, one of the white lines. Um, that's how you know that it's fully seated. If you see any white protruding from the actual connector itself, that means that it's not making good electrical connection. You're probably gonna have to take it apart and reseat it. So, anywho, uh, these guys, they only go in one direction. They have this little ridge uh, yeah, this little ridge on the top side, and that has to go facing up because um, the lower side goes into the iPod itself, so it seats properly. And you want to do that. The uh, the well, if you're looking at it vertically, the right hand side has the single long piece, and then the left hand has the two smaller pieces. So I'm going to put them in like so. Yeah, and the smaller piece with the end stop part goes on the top. The bottom one is just, there's nothing on the end here closest to me. And we're going to put on the pieces of pla uh, foam, the shock absorbing foam. I don't really know how much uh, this helps, the little foam stuff, but it can't hurt the way I figure. And we are going to seat this drive in there. It would help if this piece weren't falling off. 
There we go. Okay, drives fully seated. There's one little piece. I tore it a little bit, but it doesn't matter. And we'll get that in there. And you want to be very careful when reinserting. Uh, the battery connector because there's like a little latch on here and it's like uber fr fragile and I don't want to break it now so give me one second as I non-destructively pull this okay you know what Because it's being annoying, I'm going to use tweezers and it keeps falling back down, yeah, so there we go. So now it's out. There's two little uh, rubber, uh, little gray pieces that go on either side of the dock connector. Uh, they're to protect, protect those little inductors there. So we just want to uh, make sure that that's uh, seated in there properly. So now should be able to just kind of poke this in there making sure damn it this is really fiddly I'm not gonna lie okay once it's in there sorry if you can't see this is kinda of hard doing in front of a camera just push down the, uh, the locking tab and we're good to go so now it's just a matter of closing this guy back up Oh yeah, <laughs> one thing I forgot to do was uh, put the hold switch on before. Not that it really matters. So we're going to press the power button. It does come on. Um, and it says connect to your computer to restore instantly, which is a good sign because that means that the hard drive is working fully. So we are going to do that right now. So. Come on. Get this in. I got this in upside down. I'm a doofus. Okay. So now we got that. And I have my sync cable. I'm just going to auto focus. Auto, please, auto. Thank you. Okay. So my computer's on. Um, yeah, I guess I'll hold it. Yeah, you'll like my uh, background here. <laughs> anyway, uh, what will happen if you do everything correctly, if I get the cords all out of my way, is it will say something like this. Uh, iTunes is a detected an iPod in recovery mode. Uh, you must restore. So I'm going to hit OK. And it should eventually do something. Maybe if I hit restore, OK. It'll give you some blurb. I'm running version 1.3. I will agree. And it'll go through restoring iPod. So yeah, um, this guy is just uh, sitting there in uh, just says OK to disconnect and it has the battery charging. Um, and it is going through and restoring iPod. Thank you, Windows. But yeah, just going through there almost complete and I'll show you guys it actually up and running and show you the capacity the 60 gigs now which will be a lot nicer for my music collection so it's going through is it completed oh, just popped up as a hard disk and it says your iPod has been factory restored. Wait till it restarts and shows up in iTunes. And you'll see that the iPod logo came up. It's rebooting. There's a progress bar, which is definitely progress. <laughs> Pun intended. Uh, uh, I hate doing this with one hand. There we go. So it's uh, spinning right now. I can feel it. So it's uh, writing something or reading and rebooted that's a good sign and we should see the uh, menu pop up in a second here 
or maybe it'll actually go into disk mode immediately because it's still plugged in. I will synchronize this on my own time. I backed up all my music and everything, so not to worry. So this is going through, la di da di da Oh, there we go. So I popped up with the familiar uh, menu and whatnot, and in a second it should, it's reading the disk it's saying, and it should pop up in iTunes. And I'm getting the Windows iPod shows up as a disk in autoplay, which is a good sign. Very easy mod. I mean, I did this in less than, what, maybe 10 minutes. I, I could have done it quicker if I didn't keep blabbering. But yeah, very easy mod. And once it shows up, I will eject because I only have about 20 minutes of memory on my, my cell phone. And I will show you guys. Wow, that, that guy's still going. Still reading. Okay, uh, yeah. Welcome to your new iPod. Not really new, but thank you for the sentiment. <laughs> and I think it said something about uh, getting started. Okay. I will automatically synchronize. I don't want to open. I do want to enable disk use. And... Uh, well, I'm not even zoomed in. Great. <laughs> So yeah, basically these are options that I've selected, and you can see here it says 55.79 gigabytes. I'm going to eject it. I didn't put any music on yet, but um, I'll show you guys the actual iPod itself. Ask you for uh, what language you'd like to uh, have your iPod speak. I want it to be English. And there you go, settings, about, there you go, 55.7 gigabytes available. Um, there are mods that you can do right now for um, for adding an SSD in place of this using either uh, compact flash cards, SD cards, or uh, M.2 uh, like M SATA cards and whatnot. Um, those are quite a bit more expensive than this, and for the price that I paid, I would probably have to pay about 50 bucks to get the same memory but in an SSD, whereas I spent about 15 and I got it in a hard disk. Um, so yeah, um, so that's pretty much all. I'm at 17 minutes right now. So yeah, finished just in the nick of time. So um, if you guys have any questions, uh, leave them down below. If you like the video, give me a like. Uh, feel free to comment, subscribe to my channel, please. I'm not begging, but definitely helps. Um, yeah, so I'm happy to be able to, uh, to bring you guys some more content. So uh, until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.